Hello guys and welcome back to Introduction to Number Theory. This time we will discuss one of the most important theorems in number theory and in Euclidean rings. Uh, the uniqueness of the decomposition into prime factors or we can say the uniqueness of prime factorization. But first Let's just take a look at some examples and discuss what this uniqueness actually means. Well, say just an integer, 120. We understand that it can be decomposed as a product of 2, 2, 2, 3 and 5. But it can also be decomposed as a product of 2, minus 2, 2, 3 and minus 5. So there are slight changes between the first decomposition and the second decomposition we see that in the first we have 2 and in the second we have minus 2 and in the first we have 5 and in the second decomposition we have minus 5. Well, I believe that we can understand that these decompositions are well almost the same. And what about this one? 2, 3, 2, 5, 2. Well, when we look at them, we understand that they really look the same. But what does it mean to look the same? Well, just pay some more attention. Well, we have literally equal factors on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. And we also have some other literally equal factors. But we have more tricky cases. We have uh, minus 2 on the left-hand side and just 2 on the right-hand side. And we understand that they are somehow connected. And also we have just literally equal factors, 3 on the left-hand side and 3 on the right-hand side. And we have minus 5 and 5, which are also connected. Well. Now we should answer the question what kind of connection this is. But before we do that, let's consider another example, which will be more interesting, I believe. Consider a complex integer number, 8 minus i, where i is of course the imaginary unit. And it can be decomposed in the following way. Well, now I believe you should stop the video and really check that this decomposition is correct, that there is no mistake in it. Well, I have checked. And, well, there is another decomposition, or to say factorization, of the same complex integer 8 minus i. And when we look at these two factorizations, well, they not look, they do not look the same as there were factorizations of number 120. Does this mean that 8 minus i has indeed different factorizations? Well, of course not. If we take a look at the first factors on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we can notice that the first factor on the right-hand side can be obtained from the first factor on the left-hand side multiplying by i. So we need to take the first factor on the left-hand side, multiply it by i, where i is the imaginary unit, and we will get the first factor on the right-hand side. And what about the second factors? Well, everything is also very simple about second factors. We can take the second factor on the left-hand side, multiply it by minus i, and we will gain the second factor on the right-hand side. So we understand that actually these two factorizations are also very look-alike. So they are, well, can we call them the same? 
Well, it depends on what we mean by the same factorizations. And now we will define when two factorizations are called the same. Well, of course, all these elements are prime. You can check that also if you stop the video now and when done checking, just go on with the, our lesson. So we're about to define when two factorizations are called the same. Consider one factorization of an element n. Here, p1, p2, and so on, pl, are prime elements. And consider another factorization of the same element n. And here, q1, q2, and so on, qm, are prime elements. And notice that we have l factors in the first decomposition and m factors in the second decomposition. But what will give us right to call these two decompositions, these two factorizations, equal or the same? Well, we'll say that they are equal if, first of all, L and M are equal, the number of prime factors in the first factorization is equal to the number of prime factors in the second one. Well, this is obviously necessary condition. But for every prime factor in the first decomposition, there is a corresponding prime factor in the second decomposition which is associated to it. So we do not say that P1 must be equal to one of the Qs. No, P1 must be associated with one of the Qs. Well, here, epsilon one is just an invertible element. And we say that there is a permutation with denoted sigma. So this permutation is used to uh, denote the correspondence between prime elements in the first decomposition and prime elements in the second one. So we need to mix up one of these factorizations just to match it to the other one. So you understand that permutation means that we simply change places. So Qs change places just to be associated to corresponding Ps. Well, of course, these uh, invertible elements, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and so on, which take part in these associations, of course, a product of all these invertible elements will be equal to 1. So, if all these conditions hold, then we say that two factorizations are equal or are the same. Or we needn't even say that they are equal. We simply understand that if an element n, if all its decompositions into prime factors have this property that they have the same number of prime factors and prime factors in one decomposition correspond to prime factors in the other decomposition and they are somehow pairwise associated. Well, in this case, we simply understand that actually there is only one decomposition of n into prime factors. There is only one way to factorize n into prime factors. And the main theorem here is that if we have a Euclidean ring, then it's every element has a unique factorization, which means that it's every element can be, can play the role of this element n. So any two prime factorizations of any element of a Euclidean ring will have the same amount of prime factors and these prime factors will, in one decomposition, will correspond to prime factors in the other one. You may have noticed 
that every has a star beside it. Well, of course, not every. Of course, we are now talking about non-zero and non-invertible elements. We still don't want to play with invertible elements. I believe they're good on their own. And the main word in this theorem is, of course, unique. So unique factorization means everything that we've discussed during this video. And I hope that it will be quite clear to you after you watch it again and again.